What's good? I am Yish. This is Yish in Your Ear. Today, we're taking a look at another plugin from United Plugins called Voxessor. This plugin was created to process dialogue for film, TV, and voiceover. Let's take a look. Here is Fox Esser. This is what we'll be taking a look at. So going over the interface, this top section is the input and output section. And it is also the equalizer section. As you can see, this looks nothing like your normal equalizer. We'll take a look at that in a moment. We have an auto level function, which I think with this particular plugin is probably one of the most important things that makes this a good plugin. What the auto level function does, it works a little like a compressor, but it works more like a fader. So let me go over here with a fader. If a part is too loud, you bring it down. If a part is too low, you bring it up, right? And what essentially the auto level function will do is it will auto ride virtually, not physically here, but virtually the volume to ensure that there is a consistent level between all of the audio. Okay. Next section is the match section. Now what this does is it will analyze your voice, do some behind the scenes modifications that you won't see. What it's doing is, is processing the voice in an ideal manner, right? And then you have the strength of that um, here in this knob, this and the EQ, works together. The next section is the de -esser. We have the depth or how much de and we have the frequencies or the tuning. And at the bottom, we have a compressor and a gate. Let's start with the auto level and you'll hear where this really changes the volume. So it's going to kind of jump out at you. So you might want to turn your speakers down just a little bit. So before auto level, this is Rufus a young white cat after his only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball until one day he follows his ball outside of the house. All right. So you can see the volume jumped, right? So before this is Rufus, a young white cat after this is Rufus, a young white cat. Now, if you notice and I, let's let's pay attention to what's going on here, right? This section here and this section is just a little bit different as far as volume is concerned, right? So let's look at our meter right now. This is Rufus, a young white cat. We're peaking around here a little bit above 15, right? This is Rufus, a young white cat. Let's turn it on. This is Rufus, a young white cat. You'll notice that one, of course, there's a volume increase and two, the level between this section and the next section here is pretty consistent. So if I zoom in here, right, and we play it back and let's do this, let's play. This is Rufus, right? That peaks around there. But if we look at this, a young white cat, it peaks under 15. Turn the plugin on. This is Rufus, right? It peaks above 10 now, a young white cat. And as you can see, this peaks above 10. So it keeps the consistency between the parts even without actually compressing it. So again, if our analogy is with the fader, um, overall it's raising the volume. But what is happening is this here is matching this here approximately in the same area so that the consistency of the volume stays the same. To me, that function alone probably is the most powerful thing for your voiceover because that allows you to keep the, the, the quality or the, the tone or the texture, I would say texture of your voiceover consistent without compressing it. Because once you get into compressing, it starts to squash the peaks. This is not squashing the peaks. So this here would be considered the highest peak between the two of these. Essentially what it's doing is it's, it's just leveling it out, right? It's, it's bringing everything up to a certain level and it's keeping all of these peaks sort of in the same range. And that's the beauty of the auto level. Just that by itself to me is 
enough to get this plugin. But let's go further. So the next section we'll take a look at is this EQ section. Now, the developer decided because this is a dialogue processor to uh, to utilize the difference between uh, a man and a woman as far as the equalization is concerned. So let's say to listen at what that sounds like. Now, this section here uh, works with the intensity. So the more intense you have it, the more equalization will be done on the actual voiceover. So let's see what this sounds like when I turn this all the way up to 100. This is Rufus, a young white cat. Before, this is Rufus, a young white cat. And after, this is Rufus, a young white cat. Zero intensity, this is Rufus, a young white cat. 100% intensity, this is Rufus, a young white cat. So it's more bottom end basically from the setting at man, right? So let's move it to guy. Let's see what this sounds like. So no intensity. This is Rufus, a young white cat. Full intensity. This is Rufus, a young white cat. So you can hear it's a little different. It, it doesn't have as much of the lower frequencies boosted uh, as, as it does for the man setting. So let's just move it between the two here. This is Rufus, a young white cat. This is this is Rufus. So you can hear the difference between that. Now, from guy to woman. This is Rufus, a young white cat. This is Rufus, a young white cat. So it appears as you go up the knob here. This is Rufus. It's definitely a change in the way that the low end is processed, right? And then, of course, you can modify the intensity for however much of that uh, processing you want. And again, the, the plugin is, is designed to work with dialogue or with the voice. So that's where the algorithm generally is targeting. So the developer considered these to be the frequencies that um, are best suited for dialogue work. All right. This is Rufus. I'm going to put it a young white cat somewhere here. His only worries in life mm. are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. All right, so let's do it before. This is Rufus, a young white cat. Good clean signal, right? This is Rufus, a young white cat. That's more consistent. All right, so we got in a ballpark where we want that to be at. So we'll leave that alone. Let's go to match ideas. So the first thing you have to do for this, of course, is to engage it. All right, now I'm going to put this at zero and then we're going to hit analyze for five seconds. So I'm going to zoom in here. Then I'm going to play this with the analyze for five seconds activated. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are. All right. So now we'll disengage that and let's take a listen at what this does. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. So as you can see, this is Rufus. It's kind of softening it up a little bit, right? This is Rufus. Before. This is Rufus. All right. And after. This is Rufus. Now, I don't think 100% is ideal in this case. Let's try 50%. So before. This is Rufus. And after. This is Rufus. Okay. So it has a nice softening quality with, uh, with what we have set up here in the EQ section. So this is something you would have to tweak and find what feels good to you. And I'm using that word feel because I think that's appropriate for um, what you consider to be the best sound for your vocals. So that's something you would have to do with your voice. All right. So let's go on to the next section, the de -esser. Now, if you're not familiar with what a de is, it is the sibilance that it is looking to mitigate. It wants to control those S's so that they're not so harsh, right? That happens a lot, especially with these microphones that we have nowadays, they pick up on these S's pretty, pretty well. So this is supposed to help you um, tune those S's and those sh sounds so that they're not so harsh coming through um, the, the audio speakers um, so that they have a better quality to them. They're supposed to soften it. So let's see what that sounds like. So at 100% and in the middle 
um, setting here. Let's see what this does to the S's. So let's find that section. This is Rufus. All right, so we have a lot right at the beginning and you can hear where it's affecting it. This is Rufus. All right, so let's turn it off. This is Rufus. Now, of course, at 100%, we're really not gonna use that, but let us go through the frequencies here, the tuning knob and see what it does to the actual sound. This is Rufus. This is Rufus. So you can see that is definitely this is Rufus based off of the frequencies here. And that's what these are. These are the frequencies. These are kilohertz. So we're looking at three to two. It's kind of hard to read. I don't know if that's supposed to be 3.2 kilohertz or if it's supposed to be three and or two kilohertz. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But we'll keep tweaking here. This is Rufus. Now, I kind of like that area. So let's bring this all the way down to zero. And let's see if we can find a sweet spot that takes care of this sibilant. This is Rufus. This is Rufus. This is Rufus. This is Rufus. I think that's pretty decent. This is Rufus. All right, so that's the DSO section. Now the final two are the compressor and the gate. So we'll start with the compressor. This is Rufus. A this is Rufus. A young. This is Rufus. A young white cat. Now I didn't mention it yet, but over here we have our meters, right? We have the input and the output meter. Those are kind of self-explanatory. They work with this guy and that guy. However, the compressor gain reduction and the gate gain reduction works with these two. So according to this, this looks like the graduated lines that are here is the ideal uh, amount of gain reduction that you want to stay within. Of course, you can do whatever you want and go beyond that, but I believe these are the ideal sections or the ideal amount of gain reduction that you want these two to stay within so that you're not affecting the overall quality of your voiceover. So I'm going to stay within these ranges, but we'll, we'll push it to see what it sounds like. This is Rufus, a young white cat. Now I'll be perfectly honest. I'm going to back up off of the de-esser. This is Rufus, a young white cat. All right. So before the compressor, this is Rufus. And you can hear how it jumps out at you. This is Rufus. And when we turn the compressor up, this is Rufus. A little more. A this is Rufus. And you can hear it's more even. This is Rufus. Again, before. This is Rufus. And you can hear again how that, that this, the top of the this kind of jumps out at you. When the compressor is on, you can hear how it's brought down some. This is Rufus, a young white cat. All right, the gate is something you want to be careful with in general. Um, throughout the voiceover industry, a lot of times, really the, the gate and compression and EQ, a lot of places don't want you to modify those things. So keep that in mind. But if you're giving something that is to be the final product to a client, uh, you definitely want your, your, your audio to have a clean background. It's okay to have a little room noise. As a matter of fact, you don't want to eliminate completely um, room tone unless the client asks for that because then it becomes unnatural. So again, it shows you that there is a ideal area. So we'll try to stay within that. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. Before, this is Rufus, a young white cat. So you can hear the, the room tone in between. So let's push it back up. This is Rufus a young white cat. So as you can hear, it has brought down the room tone considerably. Now, let me turn it all the way up and you can hear how much you shouldn't do. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk. Now it sounds clean and your client may want that. So that is an option, but you want to leave a little bit of the noise floor or the room tone so that you don't lose the natural sound of the voiceover. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk. All right, so that's the bulk of what this plugin does. It gives you a one-stop shop for processing your voiceover 
to get it in the ideal ballpark of a good sounding voiceover. So with all of the processing that we did, let us do a before and after. This is before. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. And then after? This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. So as you can see, the process before and after is definitely, it definitely brings it up by volume. The EQ in section, I would say you have to be careful with that. Sometimes you may not want to do all of that. You may want to just leave it um, just the basic stuff. Behind the scenes, I did a little bit of tweaking and discovered that the intensity uh, works with the compressor. So if you don't have the intensity up, you don't get the compressor. So that's something to keep in mind here. Okay, so let us do something here. Let us render this out so that we can actually see by the wave file, what the differences are between the before and after, right? So let me render this out. I'm going to go to export. I'm going to go to audio mix down. We'll do an export. It will create a new, two new tracks actually, because it's creating a stereo file in this case, but I only need one, right? So we'll delete this one here. Click yes, all right. And this is what we have left. So zooming in on the two, you can see where the changes have taken um, for the, the audio file. Now, as you can see, it is a, it's slightly louder, right? Looking at the two, but it's more consistent across the board. And I think that's the more important thing um, when processing audio for voiceovers is that you want consistency across the board. So. Again, let us do a before and after. So this is the original one without the Voxessor. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. And then here is after. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. Now. You don't necessarily have to use all of the processes in here. Of course, you can turn the de off and use a different de -esser. You can use different EQ. You can use different compression. The main thing that I find on this particular plugin is that this auto level is a godsend. So I want to do one additional thing and we're going to reprocess the original one. Now, before I do anything else, right, I'm going to actually save this as a preset and we'll call it VO1. All right, click OK, click close. Now we have that set. So if I need to go back to that, I can. Now I am going to turn this off. I will keep this down here. We'll disable the de -esser. We'll lose the compressor. I think we'll keep the gate, but I want to really get the auto level. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll turn the intensity down as well. I really want the auto level to be the thing that um, that I use on this. So we'll reprocess this and I'm going to go to this section here because it looks pretty thick. So we'll do that. His only worries. All right. Now let me make sure I engage it. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball until one day. All right. So now I'll render this out. And so now we have a third candidate in here. Remove selected track. Yes. So now here's the difference between these three. So this is the first one. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. Second one. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. And then our auto leveler and gated version. This is Rufus, a young white cat. His only worries in life are drinking his milk, eating and playing with his ball. So that's it. That's my review of Voxessor by United Plugins. You can get this plugin at unitedplugins.com. If you like the video, hey, give it a like. Subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos. You've been watching Yish in your end. Stay tuned.